In this episode, let's have a look at DaVinci Resolve 11's new color match feature. Check this out. DaVinci Resolve 11 was released earlier this week, and when I first heard about some of the new functionality that was going to be in there, I was pretty excited in particular about something called color match. And the idea here is that you take a color palette, one of the more common ones available in the industry, in this case I'm using an x rite Color Checker Passport, you put it at the start of your clip, you tell DaVinci where it's located and you line up the color chips with this little grid here, and then it does a neutral grade for you. It does the, the first part of your color correction for you. So. The thing that kind of intrigued me about this is not only is I mean, just a massive time saver, obviously, but especially in cases where you're shooting with light sources that aren't quite as true, that are lower CRI and some of your colors are looking a little funky. My question or my thought was, well, how is it going to work for those kind of situations and how effective is it going to be? So what I did here is I have four clips and let's just have a closer look here. Four clips, this one was shot with a tungsten light, which as um, we've discussed in the past, tungsten lighting is probably the closest there is to a true black body emitter. And what that means is that a black body emitter produces color output that's pretty even across the entire spectrum of color. So um, usually a tungsten light is going to get you the truest colors and it's gonna be a little bit easier to color correct. So this is a tungsten light. In this case we have some high CRI fluorescent lights. I'm using Blue Max 94 CRI bulbs here. And um, you can see the colors are pretty good. Here again is the tungsten. Here's the Blue Max. You are seeing some differences though. Her top here actually is lavender for the record as a good reference point. And of course her skin tones are looking quite nice here. Once we get over to the tungsten, we can see that the top actually turns a bluish color. It's not lavender like in the tungsten. And the skin tones are starting to take on just a little bit of green. You can see especially down here in her neck. So not bad, but um, you know, this is not uncommon here. So high CRI bulbs often used on, you know, in a lot of productions. And they work pretty well, but they're not perfect. And then here we have uh, an example of a very poor <laughs> um, no CRI rating fluorescent lighting. So these are the bulbs that actually came with the uh, very inexpensive softbox kit that I purchased several years ago. I've talked about it lots of times. This is the ePhoto 4500 watts 3 softbox kit. It's uh, been a whirl. <laughs> it's been a workhorse for me in a lot of ways, but it's definitely got some issues here. So I guess I should also take a step back and say I record each of these clips with a Panasonic GH4 um, outputting the signal to the HDMI port in 422 10-bit and then capturing the footage in an Atomos Ninja 2, again 422 10-bit. So um, recording all the ProRes 422 10-bit, it is um, pretty solid and consistent across these in terms of what I'm getting. So this is not the same as recording it with the camera's inbuilt recorder. Um, we are getting a little bit more color information here. So one thing to keep in mind. And then finally, um, well on this one you can see the shirt is definitely blue and the skin tones are starting to look quite green. So definitely some issues going on there. And then finally we have LED. This one's not as fair because I only have one LED light and uh, I wasn't able to backlight her at all so this one looks a little harsher and less uh, less dimensional. <laughs> Um, but you can see the, the shirt is blue, but it is a little closer to lavender than the others. But the skin tones are pretty, uh, the light on the, you know, hitting these, this skin makes it look pretty harsh and it's very magenta. So we were just throwing that one in there as a reference point. But here's the poor quality fluorescent. Here is the higher quality fluorescent and here's the tungsten. So let's just have a look at how this color match feature works and we'll use the tungsten as our reference here and let's come over to our uh, poor quality compact fluorescent bulbs here uh, these have no CRI rating and it shows <laughs> again the shirt is, should be lavender it's blue and the skin tones are looking rather green just as a reference point so the way this works here is we go to our color match uh, button here and we choose our color chart selector and we just uh, get this matched up with the color chart in our clip. 
Uh, you don't have to worry if you don't get it matched up perfectly. You can always zoom in and fine tune it here like we're doing. Whoops. All right, and the idea here is, of course, you want to get the squares into the color chips. Now, there are a variety of different color charts that DaVinci Resolve supports at this point, and this is uh, August 2014, and they may end up supporting more in the future, but right now it's the x right Color Checker, Data Color Spider Checker, and the DSC Labs SMPTE one shot. I'm using a, an x right Color Checker. This is the Color Checker Passport, which is a fantastic little device. Um, well under $100, and it, um, it's easy to take with you. It is the size of a passport, hence the name, and it folds up nicely so the color chips are pretty well protected, not just out there and exposed, and you can toss it in your bag and not worry too much about it. So it's really a nice little device. I like it. Also on the other page here, you can't see it in this clip, but it also has a white balance uh, large chip that you can use. So you just point your camera at that to get your white balance set. All right, so once we've got it selected, um, one thing that also came up as a question to me was, well, what if I have, <laughs> in this case, the talent holding the chart opposite of what they're showing here? So in this one, the black tile is in the lower right corner, but I actually had her holding the black tile in the upper left corner. Is that a problem? It turns out it, it doesn't appear that it is a problem, that DaVinci Resolve is smart enough to know, hey, black's up here, and the, uh, the brownish is and flesh tone are down here on the, this other corner. So not a big deal. Um, next, you have to choose your source gamma, target gamma, target color space, target color temp, and whether or not you want to set the target white level to 0.9. So uh, what I've done, again, this is coming out of Panasonic GH4, so the gamma is going to be sRGB. Almost all DSLRs are going to be recording into the sRGB uh, gamma. So I set it there. For my target gamma and my target color space, I'm going to go ahead and use Rec. 709. That's the standard for broadcast. And uh, go ahead and leave my target color temp at 6500K. We just want to go neutral on this. And then I'll go ahead and let it choose my, or set my target white level to 0.9. So the idea there is it's just going to take this and um, bump it up to 0.9 so we can start there. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and click match. And this is what we get. Now you're going to say, wow, that looks really crushed <laughs> in terms of contrast. And indeed, I think that's true. Um, but you can still make some adjustments from here. The first one I want to talk about, um, you, you just have these adjustments down here. These are very much like the log adjustment over here. But I want to come back over here. This color boost is kind of a neat one here. The color boost is very much like for those that are photographers and are used to vibrance controls in Photoshop and Lightroom. This is very much like that. And the idea here is it takes the least saturated colors and saturates those first. So it's not like a regular saturation control, is, from my understanding, where it just applies additional saturation to all colors. This actually looks for the least saturated colors and adds saturation to those first. And so that can be a pretty handy control there. So we'll go ahead and add some color back to her. Um, also, I can come over here now. We can go ahead and turn that off for now. I may want to increase my gamma to get just a little less contrast on her face because it was looking a little bit crushed. Um, and I also might want, again, the shadows are looking a little crushed. I'll just pull up my lift just a touch as well. Okay, so that's what the color match is doing for us. And let's compare again to our reference. So here is the corrected compact fluorescent lower quality. You can see the skin tones are looking much, much better now. Uh, the top is still looking a little bit more blue than in reality, so it didn't totally compensate for that. Um, I do still like the look of the tungsten a little bit better, but you know, they're still looking like there's a little bit of green in her face, so I might just drop this a touch. Something like that. Let me bump a little more. Okay, so let's take a look again. This is the compact fluorescent, and that's the tungsten. You know, the tungsten's looking a lot lower contrast, but in any case, you can see it did not completely correct the color of the shirt. The shirt is still looking much more blue than in reality. It was definitely more lavender colored in reality, but it did a pretty nice job. It definitely cleaned up the skin tones, which is probably the most important thing, and those are looking a little bit more natural. Not perfect, but 
definitely more natural than they were before. So there is the color match functionality in DaVinci Resolve 11. Fantastic thing to use. Does it completely compensate for a lighting source that is not even in terms of color output? The answer is no, it doesn't appear to, but it's pretty good and it's, it's really useful and a terrific time saver. So you can use this with DaVinci Resolve Lite as well as the full version. So for those that uh, don't have the full version, it is definitely an option for you. Uh, color chart is relatively affordable. Um, got a link down there below for the x right Color Checker Passport. And I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.